fellow vapors and welcome to the Devil Vapor Vape Reviews. Today we'll be looking at the Smock G Priv 2 kit, kindly supplied by the people at Smock and EC Click. So please keep an eye on this review and on social media for the written review of this on EC Click as well. So this consists of the TFV8X baby tank as well as the G Priv 2 mod, which is an upgrade to the original G Priv 1. Now this is touch screen, all that lovely jazz, dual battery, um, a four mil tank. I've got the standard edition, the non-EU version, naughty, naughty me. So yeah, that is a four mil tank capacity, um, which is blooming great. I'm not gonna complain about that at all, but it's only a little bit taller than the one um, that is the EU version. So without further ado, we're gonna go down to the table, have a quick unboxing, show how to get this set up, put a new coil in there, because I'm due to change this coil, and we will list our pros and cons of it. So right, I will see you down at the table with the GPRIV2 kit. Right, so here we have the outside of the box for the GPRIV2 kit. You've got Smock, you've got the GPRIV2 kit and GPRIV2 kit written there. You have your QR code for their vaping tour app. On the back, you have your kit inclusions, uh, warnings, etc. And there should be an importer logo there. And you've got more info on the side there. So you've got your serial number, your code, your batch code, what color it is and all your different codes and contact information there. So as with Smock, you normally slide a sleeve out and you are met with Smock on a lovely box there. I do like the boxes that Smock provide, um, but it's what in, is in them that actually counts. So you get your verification and QC pass certificate. You have your GPRIV 2 kit instruction manual with like fake levery flappy bits there. You have got battery a uh, battery safety card which is always useful you have got your gpriv 2 mod which will come with a screen protector already on there i've put my own one on and um, i went out and purchased them inside the box you get a number of accessories so you have your silicone case you have your uh, silicone gel stuff silica gel you have your spare coil spare o-rings etc the Baby X Baby Tank, bloody hell, they've got so many tanks. The TFVA-X Baby Tank, which is a top airflow tank. We'll go for that in a second. Spare O-rings and a spare glass. So let's get that out of the way and let's get into the useful bits from the kit. So we're gonna start with the tank today. Uh, let's just get that into a bit better focus for you today. So you have got a humongous drip tip up there. Um, let, let me go, there we go. So you've got a humongous drip tip there. That is top fill, top airflow. There we go. It is not 510. I think this is an 810 drip tip or your usual smock drip tip size. Um, let's just get a bit of e-liquid off of there. So yeah, that is removable and replaceable if you wish to put your own one on there. Now the top fill, you have a little lock and unlock symbol and you just simply twist that and you just fill in this port here. That is your chimney where the e-liquid goes in. Up the top here is your top airflow, a new addition to the TFV8 series. Um, you know, does it make it better? We'll tell you later in the review. Um, you've got smock branding there, a bit of knurling, and that just goes back and forth, back and forth. You've got your blank tank section and your base as well as designed by Smock and your 510 center pin there, which slightly protrude, protrudes, but I still wouldn't use this on a hybrid mech at all, um, let alone on a normal mod. Um, we'll go through that later as well. So I've recently rinsed this out just for the purpose of review. Um, let's undo the tank. There we go. So we have got the coil out there. This is the Q2 coil, I think, at the moment. Yep, this is the Q2 coil, which is rated at 0.4 ohms, uh, best 40 to 80 watts, best 55 to 65 watts. And I've been vaping this at around about bang on 60 watts, no, about 52 watts, I think. Between 52 and 56 watts, I've been vaping this coil on. And the flavor has been terrible, um, absolutely terrible flavor from that coil. I will not say much more about that, but yeah, the flavor is absolutely pants with this tank and with this coil. Um, I really don't want to review the tank because it is that bad, um, but I have to do it because it was sent to me for review. So we're going to be putting in the T6, I believe the coil is, that is spare with this today. 
yep, the X Baby T6 coil. So this is a 0.2 ohm best 40 to 110, uh, or 40 to 110 best 70 to 90 watts. Um, and you can see the coils down there and their new airflowy design crap that they've put on there, which isn't really needed. Um, so to put this coil in, you simply get the coil, screw it into the base as such. There we go, you tighten that in and you are more or less good to go. What you wanna do is prime the coil, so get your e-liquid, put a few dabs down the center there, just to prime those coils up and then you should be good to go. So we'll screw this back together. Make sure it's on super tight. Now you can put the different O-rings in if you wish, if you want red O-rings or you know, keep the black O-rings, it's completely up to you. But whatever you do, just make sure it is done up tight before vaping. Now what you wanna do now is close off the airflow, open up the filling port, which isn't that bit, it's up here. There we go. Open up the filling port and dump some e-liquid in there. So I've got the four mil capacity version, I believe today, which is 24.5 mil in diameter, four mil capacity, 59 mil height, and 58.5 grams in weight. So we will dump, we'll dump half the e-liquid capacity in there because I really do not want to waste any more e-liquid on this tank than is needed. And then we'll do that up, we'll put it to one side um, and have a look through the mod whilst we're waiting for that coal to soak in. So the GPRIV2 mod, what are the specifications of this? It is 85 millimeters in height, 52 millimeters wide. It has a depth of 27.3 millimeters and a weight of 181 grams. It is made of zinc alloy. It has a power range between one and 230 watts, a standby current of 500, I think it's microamps or something like that, voltage range of 0.5 to 9, and a resistance range of 0.1 to 2.5 ohms, and 0.05 to 2 ohms in the usual temperature control. So how does this differ to the original GPRIV, um, again, well, this is a GPRIV 2. How does it differ to the original GPRIV? So it's 14% smaller. Um, you know, I think you've got a little bit less width there and a little bit less depth. It is lighter, so it's 10% lighter. This is 181 grams compared to 202. The wattage now is 230 watt instead of 220 watts. And the screen is now a new IPS 200 PPI, which is 20% sharper than the original GPRIV um, model. And you have a richer menu, more intuitive. And the tank is apparently powerful um, versus the original big baby. Um, you know, I'd say it's just as terrible. But without further ado, let's get into the mod. Up the top there you have your 510 connector which is spring loaded, ever so slightly it does go up and down. You have your stainless steel um, 510 connector there which is good. Um, size of tanks on here, I would only really recommend putting a maximum of 25 mil tanks on here, between 24 and 25. The tank with this is 24.5. You have a massive touch screen here, which kind of starts, you can see there to there. So you've got a lot of wasted space on the front of this mod, which could be more um, better utilized, I think. On the side here, you have like a lock button and a fire button. The fire button is nice and clicky. The lock button is a little bit spongy. On the side there, there is nothing. On the back, you have your fake cheap and tacky carbon fiber plastic wrap or panel. On the bottom there, you have your USB charge port and some venting. So let's open the battery door, have a look at the battery tray there. So this is very nicely marked out, I will give them that. You've got your plus and minus properly um, laid out there. So we'll put some batteries in. So you fold your battery tab over, you put your positive and negative in. I'm using Samsung 25Rs wrapped with the Core Master wrap today. And then you put your battery tab over again, get your second battery, and then you put it in like such. And that is that. Now you've got four 
strong magnets on either side so you've got four on this side and four on that side which is good and you've also got like insulation on this door here to stop any battery shorts on the door so you put that back on top very very strong magnets I will give them that it's that strong that it ain't even bloody going on right today there we go because I haven't put it on the right way there we go that is the battery door on very nice so to turn this on let's give the screen a wipe five clicks and hopefully this will be quite viewable there we go you have smock GPRIV2 version 1.0.4 and this is your main screen so at the front here you've got your menu your battery uh, life up here you have like the main bit of the screen in the middle here which shows your wattage and what mode you're in let's just give that a fire um, you have your puff counter your voltage and your um, resistance down at the bottom there and you also have your power puff counter at the bottom so to get into the menu you simply press menu and then you've got your different modes so you've got variable wattage temp control your screen options and your puffs so click variable wattage mode you can choose whether you want that on or off you have your preheat function and then you have your um, different modes for preheat so you've got soft hard normal and max we'll change that back to normal I've been enjoying it on max so let's go back to that you go temp control mode so temp control mode you can turn this on and on using this switch here you've got nickel titanium and stainless steel you've got your preheat and TCR settings as well so let's go back into that switch it on and show what the screen looks like there we go so you've got your different um, your Celsius there which is changeable by pressing the left or the right hand side of the screen there we go um, so you'd have your puffs resistance and whatnot at the bottom there now you can go back into temp control mode and change what wattage you want in there so previously it was 60 let's go back up to 80 there we go 80 watts back into the screen and you've got 80 watts on nickel there so that is quite blooming good I do like the screen on this it is probably one of the best things um, on this mod we'll go back into variable wattage mode screen so you've got different options not that you can see you've got blue purple yellow red white and green and you've also got your screen time it would be nice to be able to change the brightness you've also got a puff counter so you've got your puffs already um, you've got your puff clear which I've done numerous amount of times and you've got your maximum puff so it limits how many puffs you've got throughout the day so this button here we went about the lock button think of it as like a lock button or a screen lock button on your phone you press it and it locks the screen so when you fire we'll have to show with a tank on won't we um, when you fire, oh there we go, if you hold it down it locks the screen so you cannot change the wattage um, which is good but you can still fire it but yeah it does switch the screen off quickly so you just go pow and it just shuts down the screen so let's put a tank on and see what happens to the uh, the menus when the tanks on there so there we go we're gonna press the fire button and hopefully it reads the resistance so it reads the resistance is it a new call or an old call 0.212 yes so you've got it 50 watts normal you've got your 0.21 there you haven't got any resistance or um, amperage there because you're not firing it yet or your voltage and your amperage because you're not firing it but then that will show at the bottom there now when you do fire it shows you how many seconds and then it around the outside let's look at that little timer that that just like kind of counts down but to change your wattage just go up and down to your heart's content um, and you have got the old maximum wattage of 230 watts so I think that basically takes us round the whole of the GPRIV2 kit so without further ado we're going to go back up to FaceTime take it for a two and give our overall thoughts and opinions on it right so we are back up to facetime with the gpriv2 kit which consists of the gpriv2 and the tfe8x baby tank we have got the whatever coil it was the t6 coil in there starting off at 60 watts now i can tell you that the original coil that was in there the 0.4 ohm uh, q2 coil lasted me around about a week um, it lasted about a day before the flavor started um, diminishing, but a week before it was completely unvaporable whatsoever. So we're going to do a bit of the first impressions of the flavor on here. So let's take it for a two. 
60 watts. To start off with, the flavor's mediocre, 60 watts. We're gonna try it between 70 and 90 watts, which is their personal preference. So let's take it to 80. There we go, we've got it at 80 watts on the GPRIV2. There we go, 80 watts. Now what you wanna to remember to do is lock the screen. So hold that button and then take it for a two. Clouds, very good, very good for clouds. I'll give them that, very good for clouds. But the flavor on this already isn't something to write home about. It's acceptable, but it's just not nice. Um, you know, it's not mind blowing. You'd think on a fresh coil that's been blooming soaking for around about five minutes, that you'd have lovely flavor, but it just feels ever so slightly restricted and ever so slightly toned down. Um, it just seems like you're all like ooh, cramped. But clouds, if you're after clouds, then this tank would probably be for you. But I'm not about clouds. I want bloody flavour in my life. Um, I'm not one of these blooming, you know, 18, 19 year olds that have just started vaping and sit on a, like, in a bus stop with their blooming nightcap and tracksuit on going. I'm a vapor and all that shit. No, I want flavor. I don't want blooming hella clouds all day long. So, what do I think to the G Priv 2 kit? We will start with this piece of shit tank. That is it. It's a piece of shit. Um, Smock and their tanks, in my personal opinion, are the worst tanks I've ever used. Um, the TF V8 um, being most probably the worst tank I've ever had in the history of man. I think it's mainly down to the coils. The coils are unreliable. The coils just aren't right. The flavor is terrible. And you always get that smock fanboy. that's like, oh, they're the best flavor I've ever tasted. You haven't tasted blooming Cleo coils, mate. You haven't tasted Cleo coils. The smock TFV8 coils are absolutely terrible, without a doubt, without a doubt. And you can speak to Chris from Empire uh, Vape Co. Um, about what he thinks of the smock coils as well. Not a lot of people like them. Not a lot of honest people like them. I do not like them at all. I do like the top airflow design. It does prevent it from flooding, probably because the bottom of here is pulling up as we speak. Um, the TFV8 series had a few issues with flooding, but you're not gonna get any e-liquid leakage when the airflow's up the top there, would you smock? Um, that is why that is up there. Not for flavor, not for clouds, just to prevent the e-liquid from spilling out of somewhere. Um, so I presume you know, this will leak at some point, possibly if you have it upside down for too bloody long. So that is the tank. As for the mod, pros and cons. It feels nice in the hand. Um, you know, the screen is absolutely lovely. I love the screen and how responsive it is. Um, it does feel a little bit square in the hand though. The rounded edges are nice, but you know, it's it's good in the hand, but it's not good in the hand. It's just a few many, too many sharp edges. Uh, fire button, my fire button is fine. Um, I know some people have had the issue of it squeaking like a little mouse. I think Chris had that issue. I've not had that issue with mine, and I've gone over 999 puffs. It stops at 999 for some reason. There's a con for you, Smock. 999 puffs? I want to know how many puffs I'm doing. Um, let's take it for another two. I just like the the layout of this mod is very very nice um, I do admit that but one thing that does niggle me is say when you've unlocked it so you haven't got that little lock see there's the lock symbol when you haven't got that up there you could put that in your pocket or you could be fumbling around you know let's just do a bit of that you know um, and you can fanny around with the wattage now I was at my sister's what a wedding the a few weeks ago and I had this, and when I'm drunk, I kept forgetting to lock the screen. Um, and that caused me to take a few hits, not at the 70 watts I was vaping it on. It was on 230 watts. And it was a bit of a shock, especially when I was bloody drunk as well. 
So it would be nice to have like an auto lock function. So when you fire it, like, so you do that, it locks the screen. That would be absolutely lovely. I'd like to see that on here. Another con is the way the batteries are discharged. I've had it happen a few times um, up the top there with the battery levels where one battery discharges quicker than the other. Um, that has been the main con for me because then the mod doesn't last as long. It just doesn't seem to balance it very well at all. And when you flip the batteries around in the mod, it just switches them around. So there's um, a little bit of an issue there possibly with the firmware. I would also like to see like a screen brightness mode, you know. Um, it is a little bit too bright at some times, especially when trying to record things and take pictures. The screen is a little bit too bright. But overall, what do I think of the GPRIV2 kit? Um, if I was to get one, oh yeah, another negative. The tank color does not match the mod color. The tank is a little bit different to the mod. Um, what do I think? You can only fit 24, you can have 25 with a little bit of overhang. Uh, 24 and a half is the ultimate um, proper size for this. But what do I think? The tank, I would personally throw straight in the bin. If it was me, I'd just go for the mod rather than the tank um, or the tit, the kit. Sorry, the tit, the kit. Um, the mod is absolutely sound as a pound. It does have its few little niggly bits, but you know I've worked around them. You just got to remember to press the lock button. You've got to remember to keep an eye on your batteries, um, and you are good to go. Uh, battery life hasn't been too bad. I've been getting around about a day out of this with the calls provided. That is my personal way. Um, you know, a day uh, for a dual battery mod at 80 watts isn't too bad for me. Um, a little bit under, but you know, that's how it goes. Um, as for flavor, clouds and whatnot. Flavor, no. Clouds, yes. Um, functionalities, yes, it's pretty blooming good. I don't know if I've written actually anything on my notes here that I need to bring up because I do write notes on my reviews now. Smock G Proof 2 kit. Um, so yeah, pros, mod looks great, nice paint finish, easy to use and navigate screen, bright and easy to use screen, but it is a bit too bright. Uh, tidy battery compartment, we did go through that. Top airflow tank means less leaks, we went through that because obviously there's no leakage at the bottom. Good clouds and there's no lights like they do on that new blooming um, crap bloody tank. I don't know what it is. Cons, here we go. Extreme lack of flavor from the tank. We've gone through that. Flavor is poor and dry over 50 watts. That's what it was on that X2 coil, um, the Q2 coil. It does drink juice, the Q2 coil. Um, we went through the color of the tank that is different. Lack of customizability on the screen, which is a con for me. Lack of menu settings, lock button above fire button. We went through that. It needs to have an auto lock function. Um, and we did say that batteries sometimes drain unevenly. So we've gone through all the pros and cons I've listed there and the ones I've thought up of today. So yes, would I recommend going to buy one of these? I'd recommend going to buy one of the mods, but not the tank or the kit. That is my personal preference at the end of the day and my personal opinion. So I would like to thank the people at Smock and the people at EC Click for sending this through for the purpose of review. I'll write links in the description for more information. I've been the Devil Vapor and you've been watching Devil Vapor's Vape Reviews.